Howdy, I'm Dixie Peabody, and you sputtered into trailers from hell. Today, we're going to take a look at Viva Knievel, the movie that answers the question, how bad must the film be before Irwin Allen takes his name off the credits? A couple of years earlier, George Hamilton had played infamous daredevil Evil Knievel in an amusing little picture called Evil Knievel. So, some rocket scientists might have thought, wouldn't it be even better to make a movie with Evil playing himself? They spent a fortune on this picture with a typically Allen all-star cast backing him up. But the end result was Plan 9 with motorcycles. In fact, if Ed Wood had made this movie, he could not have done a worse job. From the opening scene with an orphan throwing away his crutches and bawling, you're the reason I'm walking, Evil! You're the reason I'm walking! All the way down to Frank Gifford in his first dramatic performance as... Frank Gifford. It's a fiasco on almost every conceivable level and it was Warner's big summer release for 1977. And the moral of this story is, if you're gonna screw up, don't do it halfway. Strap yourselves in, this is not gonna be pretty. You'll notice a lot of orange costumes in this movie. I guess they were having a fabric sale at Kmart that week. The first name in excitement, the one and only Evil Knievel. Stars in his first motion picture, Viva Knievel. Try not to listen to that theme song because it'll burrow into your brain and never leave. There's Lauren Hutton, who actually gives a good performance as she's apparently the only one who realizes what a pile of dung she's fallen into and plays it accordingly. At one point, she asks Evil what his hometown is and he replies, Montana. This was the last feature directed by Gordon Douglas, who started with Our Gang and went on to such classics as Them and Kiss Tomorrow Goodbye. The indestructible evil in the excitement picture of the year, Viva Can Evil. Also starring Gene Kelly. And poor Gene Kelly as an embittered alcoholic mechanic, absolutely the most embarrassing role of his career, and no, I am not forgetting Xanadu. Well, I don't run with the pack. Never did, never will. Red Buttons. And there's Red Buttons, but hey, at least he got lunch. Olsen. You got yourself a full-time job till school starts. Leslie Nielsen. A trio of solid villains there, and Nielsen proves he wasn't kidding when he said he played comedy and drama exactly the same. Now that tire's got to go flat the instant that Knievel has completed his jump. You saw it just... Marjo was good casting too, as I'm sure he was constantly saying, Jesus, what am I doing in this garbage? to take your body back to the United States is covered for about 50 million bucks worth of cocaine. To be fair, the stunt work is pretty solid, though given how nervous insurance companies are, I suspect evil was doubled on a lot of them. Just say I love him. The chase is on. And the action never stops. This came out at the height of the midnight movie era, and I'm surprised Warner Brothers never tried to push it as one. It would have been a smash. The plot involves a drug smuggling plan that is so insanely complicated that even Wile E. Coyote would have thought it was nuts. And the dialogue runs to things like, Here comes Evil Knievel riding towards triumph or tragedy. Daredevil evil in a spectacular story of spine-tingling suspense. Anyway, if you're in the proper mood, crack open a 12-pack, light up a fatty, or just stay sober, and surrender yourself to the idiocy. It's a magical voyage back to a time when evil tried to take over Hollywood and failed spectacularly. Oi, there's that theme song again. Make it stop! Viva! 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 Viva!